Welcome to another video in the Getting Started with SAP s for HANA playlist. In the last video, I explained what is the concept of connecting to an SAP server, what is SAP graphical user interface, and how to find an SAP service provider so you can subscribe and get access to an SAP server. In the video today, I will start with the live demonstration and I will demonstrate how to download and install SAP GUI for Windows also how to add the different SAP server connection details. The SAP GUI version I am using in the demo today is 7.7, which was released around 2021 or 2022 and is still valid and being used until today. I'm also going to demonstrate version 8, which was released in 2023 or beginning 2024. So both of them will follow the same instructions. For an SAP consultant or an SAP user, there is really no major difference between version 7.7 .7 and version 8. So both of them will work fine for you. If you would like to know the differences, you can check the SAP release notes to see the fine details. Now let's start with our demo. Accounting entries and everything. The SAP business process integration is for HANA. To install and download any application, I always find it much easier to follow a blog post than to follow a video because this way I can scroll down at my own pace and I can follow the instructions clearly. So for the same video I'm creating now, I have created a blog post that includes all the transactions I'm going to explain and demonstrate. So if you go to galalconsulting.com slash post slash SAP GUI Windows, I am going to leave you the link here in the video, also in the video description. You will find all the instructions that I'm going to explain now. First, we start by downloading SAP GUI for Windows. And here we have two options. Option one is the official option. So to go to the SAP support website and download it from the software center. And option two is to download it from Google Drive or Dropbox or from any directory where someone has uploaded the file. So for the official option, we go to this link. SAP Me Software Center. I'm going to leave you the link here in the video, also in the video description, and you can also find it in the blog. So if I open this link, you are going to find this page, but before you get here, the link will ask you to log in to the site. To log in, you need an S user, which is an, a user ID provided to you if you work for an SAP customer or an SAP partner. If you don't have an S user, then this option will not be valid for you. The S user is mandatory for the official option. And even if you have an S user, sometimes you don't have the needed authorization to download anything from the software center, which is actually my case. So I do have an S user because I work for an SAP customer, but my user ID is not authorized to download anything from the software center. So I can see the file, but I cannot download it. Here's how you can find the file anyway. So you go here to download software, and then you go to by category. Then here, if you scroll down, you are going to find front, front end components. And then inside you are going to find here SAP GUI for Windows, SAP GUI for Windows 8. And then here, if you click on installation, I don't have the needed authorization to download any software, but anyway, you can find it here. If you click on this link, then it will add it to the download basket and you can download it if you have the needed authorization. I already have the file, so I'm going to, I'm, I don't need to download it anyway, but I just wanted to show you that you need the S user and the authorizations in order to be able to download the file from the SAP support website. Now let's go to the second option to download the file. So the second option is to find it on Google Drive. So you can search on Google, download SAP GUI Google Drive, and you will find many links that have been uploaded by different people. You just need to be very careful whenever you download any file online from untrusted sources. You need to have an antivirus just to be sure that there is nothing wrong in the file. So if you are a channel member, I have already uploaded the file for you in the member documents library. So if you go here to member documents and then go to SAP GUI setup, Windows and Mac, you'll be able to find for one file for Windows, which is a compressed file, and one file for Mac that I will demonstrate in the coming video. So this is the channel members documents library. So if you are a channel member, an elite member or higher, you will get access to this Google Drive that includes these files and also it includes different other files for configuration, training, best practice documents, and so on. So if you are interested in getting access to this library, you can check the channel membership program. I will leave you a link here. So if you are a channel member, just go to this folder and you'll be able to find the two files here. So download the .zip file for the demo of today. So once you download the file, you will have this compressed file. You need to extract it. So right click and click on extract all and this will extract the folder. 
and you will find this folder here. So you open the folder and then open the folder BD underscore NW underscore 7 presentation 7.7. .7. So this is for SAP GUI version 7.7. .7. I'm going to show you how to do the same for version 8 after we are done with this. So open this folder and then go to press 1. And here you go to GUI, Windows, Windows 32. And then you scroll down to set up all. So this is a summary of the instructions. As you see, there are many different files, many different options. There's also here a guide that is SAP setup guide. So this is an official training document by SAP that explains the different options available here. Feel free to explore. I'm just giving you the shortest way to get started with SAP S4 HANA. So you open setup all.exe and then just follow the setup wizard. So click on next. And here we need to install SAP GUI for Windows 7.7 .7 and Business Explorer. These are the only two options I always install. As you see, there are many other different options. Any option that you select will require additional storage and will add additional features to the SAP GUI. You can go ahead and explore all of them. If you move the mouse to any option, you'll find a summary on the right. So for example, KW add-on is a front-end add-on for SAP Knowledge Warehouse, which is not something that I use. So anyway, go ahead and explore what you want. You can also use the SAP setup guide document that's available in the folder to understand more details. But the shortest way is to install the SAP Go for Windows 7.7 .7 and the Business Explorer. Then click on Next, Next, and this will start the installation. So this is how you can install SAP GUI 7.7. .7. Now while this is working, let's go back and I'm going to show you how to install SAP GUI version 8. So let me go back here. So for the SAP GUI version 8, we follow the same steps. First, we download the file either from the official SAP website or from the Google Drive for the channel members or from any other resource you can find online. And then you will find this compressed folder, extract it, and then you will find this folder. So open the folder and go again to the same directory, pres1. And here we have GUI. So the same instructions as 7.7. .7. Windows, and then you have Windows 32 or 64. So I will choose 64. And then here you go to set up all. But now since I already have an SAP GUI version installed on the device, I will not be able to proceed. But when you go inside, you will find the same options as 7.7. .7. But if I remember correctly, you are not going to find the Business Explorer. So you are only going to find the SAP GUI 8 uh, option and many other options that you do not need. So just select SAP GUI version 8 and then click on next and install and it's done. Now the installation of SAP GUI 7.7 .7 on my laptop is complete. I can click here on close and then I can open SAP GUI. And here I already have some SAP connection details that exist from my previous installation. To add any SAP server connection details, you click on this icon, new, and then click on connection. Then click on next. You do not change anything here, just leave it as is. Click on next and here you have custom application server and you can add any description you want. So this can be test desk and then you have the application server. So here we add the IP address that is provided to you by the SAP server provider. So let's say for example 999.999.999.99 and then there is the instance number which is two numbers. So for example 99. And then the system ID, which is three digits. So this can be letters and numbers. So for example, Z4S, it is different for each server. And then there is the SAP router string, which starts with slash H. This one is optional, not mandatory. And it depends on whether the SAP server provider provides you these details or not. So for example, for my AG SAP S4 HANA server access, I do not use SAP router. So if you subscribe to my service, I'm only going to give you the application server, instance number, and system ID, and I don't have an SAP router string, so you leave this one empty. It's optional. After you are done, you click on next, and then finish. And here you will have the server, so you can double click on it. And then if you have inserted the details correctly, and more importantly, if the server is actually working, you should be able to open the server and start using SAP. But in my case, as you see, I'm getting this error. Host name is unknown because I inserted dummy details. And there is also the option to display the error description. And this is something you should always do if you are going to share this error with someone. So if you subscribe to an SAP server and then you get this error, then click on yes before sending this error to the server provider. 
All you need to do is to take a print screen and then send it to them and they should be able to understand what is the error that's happening. Now let's go back and let me show you what happens when I open my own server. So if I click here, which is working, so double click, you should get this screen. So you have here the client number and then you insert the user ID and the password and press enter and you'll be able to use SAP. I am going to give you more details on how to customize the SAP GUI interface. So how can you change the colors, the font and so on in other future videos. But for this video, this is what we wanted to do. So we have seen how to download SAP GUI for Windows, how to install it, and then how to add the SAP server connection details. One last optional tip I'm going to add is that you can group different server connection details in folders. So if I go back to SAP GUI, here I can right click on workspaces and then click on add new workspace, give it a name, and this will create a new folder where I can store different server details. So this is useful if you are using different SAP servers, which is my case. So I have different SAP servers for different clients and different reasons. This is why I have different folders. And here, for example, in the other folder, I have many other SAP server connections. And always remember that the SAP server connection details are confidential. So you should never share the IP, the host name, or your user ID or password with anyone. This is it for today's video. In the coming one, I'm going to show you how to download and install SAP GUI for Mac. If you would like to get access to the Google Drive where I share different files, then check the channel membership program. This will give you access to the member exclusive videos and also the different configuration files and other files I share on the Google Drive. Also, if you want to get access to an SCP S4 HANA 2023 server, you can check the service that I provide by going to galalconsulting.com slash SCP access and you'll find all the prices and details there. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to share the video with your connections, subscribe to the channel, leave me your comments and questions and let me know what other topics I should add to this playlist. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.